tell people what you do. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, thanks, first of all, for, you know, for taking some time out here to chat with me. So my name is Beata Chalette. Uh, you know, some of my, you know, ma many people just call me B for ease of use. And I am a entrepreneur, a single parent, immigrant, and eventually, you know, the founder of the Women's Code. I love business. I love having everything i've always felt it was a a problem you know like whenever someone tells you that you have to make choices in life you can either have one or the other mm. i've always rejected that as a thought i always felt that the world was mine for the taking and i awesome. immigrated <laughs> i immigrated from germany in in 89 so a long long time ago when i was uh, uh, quite uh, quite young and i felt that i wanted to come into a country where the you know the unlimitedness of belief still existed which it does mm -hmm. and uh, i felt that there was something i had to do although you know i wasn't quite clear what that was and today i'm pretty certain that what i you know what i'm here to do is to establish a code amongst women and a code in the world and you know the code as you know david we we talked about it that also is very valuable for men but i call it the women's code because right. there is no women's code so that's what i'm here to do so uh, so uh, i guess I'll, I'll give a little background i i um uh, uh saw an article you wrote in the Beagle Bugle that uh, Michelle Miller sent out um, about the the uh, women's code gig that you're doing at the Wizard Academy here. Soft plug, it's on um, uh, October the 24th and 25th in Austin. Uh, it's $1,200 and $600 to uh, uh, Wizard Academy alumni, so be sure and come to the October 1st uh, Friday to uh, get flagged as an alumni member. Anyway, I, I saw your your uh, note come across the article about that. And um, uh, have you talked with Michelle about changing it to the women's code for men and women yet? Yes, we are actually in a hot discussion about it. I actually believe that uh, that we'll, we'll, we'll probably do it as a co-ed version, just because the response is so phenomenal that I feel it's it would be almost like we'd be excluding the men, and you know I don't really want that because the women's code needs the men. Well, yeah. So um, you know, if you're uh, in or near Austin, or gonna, or you know somebody in or near Austin uh, that like to uh, you know more find out more about how women think, whether you're a man or a woman. <laughs> uh, be sure and check the uh, Wizard Academy site, and uh, uh, which is uh, wizardacademy.org, and check and see, um, you know, uh, if if that changes from women only to men and women, right? Yes, absolutely. And also be sure and let me know too, so I can mail people and let them know. Yes, no, I will. I actually have it on my list for today. Oh, to good. Talk so to yeah, you. if you could, um, if you could uh, let me know here in the next day or so, that'll uh, give me a month uh, promo cycle. So. Oh, that would uh, would be awesome. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. Yes. Cool. So tell me about the women's code. What does that mean? Well, the women's code basically was uh, invented from. You know, the background is that I, as a single parent and as a, you know, entrepreneur, I found it very difficult to communicate with other women. Mm. So it, it was like I felt very alone. I had to make all my mistakes alone. There was no nobody out there, you know, who could, you know, really open up and say, okay, this is how you do it. Like when you get to this point, this is what you do. When you get to this point, this is what you do. And I felt that, you know, because I, you know, considered myself an attractive single woman, I wasn't invited uh, anywhere. So it was me, you know, in the single woman's club. And then there was a lot of other single moms that were in various stages of frustration and being completely and entirely overwhelmed. And then there were the other women, those were, you know, the married women that protected their, you know, their lives with the husbands and the children but I felt incredibly yeah single women don't really get invited this is saying that says there's always a spot at the table for the single man never for the single woman so if there's a single man in your in your in your you know environment usually they would get always invited and you know and then they you know people try to fix them up but single women not so much it's so what, a, what do you what do you think is the reason for that that's that's kind of an odd i guess i've other than thought about that this is the first time i thought about that what what do you think is the reason for that i think a lot of it roots in in just the way it's always has been and in the way we have adapted this behavior from our mothers and you know and our mothers from their mothers because 
historically speaking, it was that, you know, women sort of had to, you know, stay at home and keep sort of their environments, you know, tidy and clean and cook and do whatever there is. But in order to get the, you know, the best provider, they had to make sure that they looked the best, that they, you know, shut down the competitor. So it was this competitive, oh. this competitive setting, I believe, goes goes back to the, you know, to the early mm. stages of, of, of forever. And it's genetically embedded in our DNA that we just don't trust other women because what if, you know, she is more attractive and then the most attractive man is not choosing us, but the other woman. Mm. And with this behavior, we continue and a lot of it is very unconscious or subconscious where we continue this catty behavior where we say bad things we gossip we talk about other women women bully other women if you have children and children you know it, it starts the passive aggressive behavior and there's studies on that start with women at the age of nine wow so so this early on or you know who has not had the daughter that comes home who said Susan is not my friend anymore. And you say, what happened with Susan? You know, and that's interesting because girls do that. I've never heard a guy ever say so-and-so and I aren't friends anymore because we may yeah. have fights, but, you know, we work it out. You work it out. Yeah. <laughs> There is, you know, and, and I think it's important to understand when we talk about the women's code, sort of what where this all is coming from. So if there's an argument with between, you know, two boys, it usually is about who is the stronger or faster or, you know, it's usually about a physical attribute. Because, again, you know, let's go back. The, the strongest, the fastest is the most attractive. So the new kid comes and says, hey, David, I'm going to beat you in running. And then you say, dude, no, I'm the champion, okay, Un undisputed. So you challenge each other, you do whatever it is, or you fight, you run, you, 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 you tackle, you, you know, whatever it is, and then he wins, or you defend your champion title, and it's done. Yeah. Women are not like that. Huh. So in, you know, for women, this it's an ongoing kind of battle of, of always trying because we are such we're so complex and we are run and ruled by relationships on community you know and this type of community setting that we always massaging all of our connections and hmm. you know and, and sometimes Susan will 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 be beneficial because we we have a benefit sometimes someone else will be beneficial so we 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 are always somehow you know and it looks to the outside as scheming and maneuvering and it is again you know genetically embedded and so do you th and do you think the reason for that is the uh, protecting of your young is that is that where that comes from or do you have some ideas on that? I think that where it originally comes from is 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 literally making sure that you 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 really had to protect what you had in the best possible way so you 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 know you collaborated where you needed to whatever in the cooking or in you, you know whatever that that was but when it came to your home life you kept it tight and you know you wanted your your kids to have the advantage you wanted um you know your, your boys to get the most beautiful woman you wanted to get your women to have the strongest men so everything was about and I want to, don't want to say plotting or scheming because those are very negative terms. But I think it was about a a a larger scale plan. Yeah, that, it's a a, a long term strategy. Yeah, but, I mean, it may look like scheming, but really it comes down to a um, you know a strategic you know propagation of your genes. I, is kind of what it sounds like. It's very interesting. I, first time I'd ever thought of um, uh, the differences between men and women, and you know, and uh, like gene strategy or um, you know population genetic uh, proliferation strategy that's interesting well and as a part of that of course becomes the withholding of information yeah because if i have figured something out that works i for sure don't want anyone else to work uh, to know about this because i don't want other women to get an advantage out of what i had to work for so hmm. hard and now if we fast forward this today now what we what we see is that we have a very confused society because you think <laughs> yeah and and i have some very specific thoughts about that because what has happened is that it's been 50 years and that you know and i really want the the your listeners to 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 think about this 
Women have had 50 years. It's been in the 60s when we burned the bra. Mm -hmm. And when we were able to do or choose whatever we wanted to do, I truly believe, it, you know, at least in the Western world, is that we have every, every opportunity available to us. We can do whatever we want. However, without the thousands of years that men have had how information is assembled yeah. and then how man teaches boy and how then boy teaches you know you know boy yeah, becomes how, man how it and proliferates yeah right we don't have any of it hmm. so today we have every woman for herself whereas men are literally unchanged in the way you know the man's code excuse me, has been passed down. So now we have clusters and groups of women that are the, the, the career women, you know, climbing the ladder in stilettos. So we have... <laughs> Over the dead, broken bodies of those in their way. <laughs> go, go for the corner office, girl. And we have we have the housewives, and now the the housewives have even become a, a thing. You know, the real housewives of Atlanta, the real housewives of of Los Angeles, the real housewives of New York. We have uh, you know soccer moms have become a you know a, a term. So what we're seeing today is that we have again women at each other's throat, where certain clusters of women that congregate with women that are like that have the same kind of focus. And now again, you know, our focus is taking the other ones down because what we do is better. So the women's code was women's code was was founded because I can't stand it <laughs> that's what it was about you go girl i you know and and what happens is in your you know in in your teens it's the high school it's the school it's devastating i mean girls become bulimic mm -hmm. they you know we've we've seen you know cases of of now young women uh, killing themselves because they've been bullied because they've been torn down so badly yeah i very routinely bring teenagers in my in my conferences and my classes i hope i'll be able to find someone in austin that i can bring in because it really raises the awareness on how deep rooted and how early on this stuff happens and what damage it does for the rest of you know our adult lives as women and hmm. so what happens is now we we need to find a way as women to work together to collaborate because we are at a critical junction in history yeah. i mean i you know i mean anywhere we go from whether you believe nostradamus or the aztec prophecies or whatever it is or or the bible you know or if you if you if you live here today i think one thing is for absolute certain things are changing and they're changing pretty rapidly so you got to get on the bandwagon very very fast so I, I realized, you know, in the 30s, I worked my butt off and completely alone. And then when I sold my company in, uh, in 2006, and, you know, and I am the, uh, you know, rags to riches. I mean, it wasn't really entirely rags, but, you know, very middle class. And then, you know, struggled for a long time until I struck, struck gold after I sold my company. And I realized, why did I have to do all of this by myself? Right. What if... What if someone can derive a benefit out of what I've learned over these many years and how hard it has been? And then, you know, it's not just the business part and the making money and establishing yourselves, but it's also about who do you want to be as a person? And I realized I probably was a bitch. I probably was very arrogant. I probably was mean. I probably don't have a path that's littered with well-wishers. There's probably people that will say terrible things about me, and, 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 and they are. And I realized none of this is really necessary because I, I can be who, a person that I like. Mm -hmm. I can do something that I feel is an important contribution and I can do something that really changes the way women interact with each other. As a result of women learning what the women's code is, funny enough, 66% of our, you know, participants or our graduates see a an improvement in their relationship, a significant improvement in in their relationship, but not just with other women, with their but also men. with their husbands. Yeah. 
You know, it's really interesting. You're sitting here talking, and I'm thinking back also. Uh, have you uh, read um, any of um, Helen Fisher's work on, like, Anatomy of Love, where she looks into the gene- the whole genetic makeup of, um, of interspec- or, uh, male-female species interaction with humans? It's no. fascinating. One of the big differences between that I'm just realizing listening to you is men, like when we went out to hunt, we had to do that together. Ain't no way one of us is taking down a woolly mammoth. They just ain't no way. It's going to take a freaking <laughs> tribe to take that puppet, exactly. that, you know, woolly mammoth down. Yes. On the other hand, you know, the women staying back at the hearth, their whole thing is to take care of their kids. Not only other people's kids, but they got to take care of their kids. And they're always vying for the attention of the person bringing back the biggest haunch of mammoth. Right. Because if they don't get no haunch of mammoth to give to their kids, the kids die. It's a really interesting dynamic. First time I've ever thought about it. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, you know, so so now that we've covered sort of where this comes from, you know, and it's important that, you know, I, I for the record, it's nobody's fault. It's not no. that, you know, it's not that men are better and women are, are, are worse or women are better and, you know, more intelligent and men are this or that. No, just it's different. just they're just different and th- that's actually our first our very very first principle of the women's code and it's called awareness it's when you ri- when the awareness rises mm-hmm. and you know just like you say i have never even thought about it that's interesting but i i will promise you that with that awareness in mind you will already look at behavior that you encounter you know between women and women very differently because now all of a sudden with the awareness the recognition happens you go like oh wow i see it in action oh this is where this comes from now i see how this kind of all works together and once the awareness is raised at changing or adjusting the you know the the attitude or the attributes is is relatively easy because women are smart and men are smart so once you know and it's you know and I think it's so natural and so easy to make these shifts is because you know it is it is true and because it is a knowledge we carry within ourselves already so when this knowledge rises to the surface and it is consciously accepted now we can with this awareness we can you know go to the collaboration which is you know another big uh, term in in the women's code and support and that's really all it is it's raise the awareness establish the collaboration and give women the support that they need cool yeah, you know, it'd be really interesting to to uh, maybe you do this in your um, workshop is to really talk about the difference of how men approach. Like, if you're a woman, how would you take down a woolly mammoth? You ain't gonna do it by yourself, right? And so you have to work out, and you can't be, you know, being catty with a group of women out hunting a mammoth. It ain't gonna work. I mean, that's, you know, men are really. Um, you know, if they have stuff come up, they get it worked out really, really fast. And there's no emotional residue left over either, really, most of the time. Yes. So it's really, well, it'd be really interesting to, to you know, have, have women think about how, how men specifically interact with the world differently. Because it's the same way with information. Like, if, if I'm going to go hunt a woolly mammoth, it behooves me. It's good for me to tell anybody else all my secrets about pulling down the woolly mammoth. Right. Because we got to work, we got to do this sucker together. It ain't no, you know, I'm going to keep some specialized information and hope that I'll somehow get to use it when the mammoth is bearing down on me at full speed. Well, even more so, you know, you will share the information in such a way that you hope you can get to take down three. Oh, exactly. So and you also, don't have to you know, do it you, again so quickly. <laughs> if, you, if you know something else that expands my knowledge, I expect that I'm going to share with you and it's going to be reciprocal that you're going to, you know, say, well, I, you know, I tried that, but here's a better way. That's even, you know, better for me. Yes, absolutely. And that is so interesting. So, you know, to, to, to get back to, you know, today's women's code, now you realize why it is been, why it's been such a challenge that women, you know, women, women understand this, this fundamental principle, because without that knowledge or understanding, you just continue the same behavior over and over and over again. And, and that's how, how mothers you know, just hand down the information because the daughters, the daughters see what's going on. But the problem is because we now have 
you know, the, the, so the challenge today is, you know, and this is why it's become, why it's come to this point where we see these record-breaking re, uh, divorce rates. Mm. There has been a study called the paradox of declining uh, female happiness, where it's uh, been established by a prestigious university, and I'll be happy to, you know, to show you the study, where they said that the unhappiness of women is at an all time high hmm. so let's let's just think about this we have everything we ever wanted we can do whatever we want whenever we want it that's interesting we we, we can make more money we can have better jobs we we, we have a, a larger choice than men we we you know, we can pick any job that we want we can go live anywhere we we want we can live in condos and houses in the countryside in the city we can fly to places we have everything available to us and women are unhappier and more dissatisfied than they've ever been well, why is that here's why okay because if you don't know what it's like to have everything if there is no code no roadmap available to you on how to maneuver everything you will just be overwhelmed because uh, you oh, try. So, so you're saying basically the train is so large that you better have maps to make sense of it or it, it just rolls over you like the cosmic steamroller. I, I, you know, in, in, in the course, the way I explain it, I say in order for women to maneuver this whole maze of everything and everything is, let's, let's, let's talk about what's everything. Everything is I want to look good. I want to take care of my body. I want to eat well, which is, you know, your uh, your category. The second part is I want to do something that's meaningful to me, my work. Mm -hmm. I want to be inspired. I want to make a contribution. One aspect of it is I want to be, you know, properly compensated for it. I want to have the money so I can do all the fun things right. that I want to do. And time and then, too, because if you got money and no time, that's no good. And then I want to have time for my spiritual development, right. my connection with God or the universe or whatever sort of there is. Then, of course, I want to have a great uh, relationship. I want to have time with my children to do all these types of things. You see how we're already adding up to this? Yeah. And, you know, and if I have all these things and I have these great expectations of myself that I want to be the great mother. You know, so we heard Michelle Obama speak about, you know, her, her husband, President Obama. You walk away from it and you go, OMG, this woman is absolutely perfect. OMG, this man is absolutely perfect. So because of the information that we are receiving from the media, or from other people, which is filtered information, mm -hmm. we think others got something figured out that we, that we don't. don't yeah that's funny so now i feel already bad about myself because i want to have shoulders like her i want to have this healthy glow that she does i want to speak as uh, uh, eloquently as she does i want to have a successful husband like she does i want to be as devoted of a mother as she does plus have ample time to travel the world and and contribute to all these things of course i walk away from this feeling completely and entirely inadequate you know, you, you surface something that's really interesting here that I it's the first time I think I've thought of it before is that the way that I manage my happiness is a, a couple of ways. I, I flood my body with nutrients so that I tend to be really bipolar. And so I, I, I nourish my body so I, I peg over in manic all the time. I mean, I like feeling manic, so I just I, I maintain my health in such a way where I never hit the depressive phase. The other thing I do that I think is really important that it's the first time, you know, you've you surfaced it to me is that I prioritize. I know that the terrain of all possibilities is massive and I got lots of maps. And I also know that ain't no way I'm going to get everything done that I could dream up. But uh, you're a guy. Yeah, well, but what I do is I prioritize. I say, OK, I know that I ain't going to get to do everything. And I could be depressed about that, or I could say, I'm only going to do, I know I can do this one thing in the next day, so that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm just going to do that thing. I ain't going to do anything else. Nothing else exists. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And then the next day, I do the next priority. I figure out what that is and keep going. I'm glad that you said that, because what I've uh, what I've invented and trademarked is a concept that I call egorhythm. Mm. And oh, that's, um, I like that eco rhythm. That's cool. Ego, yeah, like ego, the I. So it it and and what happened is when my daughter grew up, 
I recognize that we stress out over things that one day dissipate. Yeah, you stressed about one thing and, you know, a week from now, will it even exist? Or exactly. a year from now, will anybody, will you even remember? Exactly. So is it you know worthwhile to even give any consideration, any mental bandwidth to? Yeah. Exactly. So what I what I came up with and what you know what what my work now has really proven to be the case, not just for myself, is that there is a rhythm for everything. Ego, my own rhythm for something. I've identified nine major rhythms, and I give you just a couple. So, for example, love would be one ego rhythm, family would be one ego rhythm, career would be an ego rhythm. And so, when you say you prioritize, this whole concept is a compartmentalization technique based upon women centric you know understanding because women's women you know I can't give women boxes I have to give women waves so if 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 I you know if I meet the great guy here's the love wave oh wow what a wonderful thing he's the best guy in the world I can't I can't wait to spend one minute without him he's got flaws okay well you know it would be kind of nice if he'd be cleaning up some things too so we 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 work with a with this, wow, this is great, this enthusiastic, get completely and entirely en engulfed in it, and then the wave tapers off, and then there's another wave coming on. So what the Women's Code teaches in its most simplified form is that women can have everything, just not all at once. There you go, that's a, that's a good way of saying it. Yes, so I teach them to look at their lives you know what brought him from from here to you know we have the starting point that's here today i call that when you go in the metro in the subway system in new york before you can do anything ever you got to look to that dot that says you are here <laughs> yeah you got to know where you are in space you have to know your position before you know how to start where to go next right. So that's the very, very first thing that Women's Code does. It helps you to establish that you are here. It's called, you know, and it's it's an uncovery process. That's what I call it. Cool. So we go through a bunch of different exercises to establish, okay, where am I even? Which which ego rhythm am I in? And the second part is we look at what women have done because, you know, I. I in, in, in some of the classes, so I, I meet these unbelievable women. So there's a woman, she's um, 60 years old, and she uh, she said to me, you know, I, I started this business and I feel I really should be putting more time in my business, but I met this great guy and we are having so much fun. He's taken me everywhere. I've been here and I've been here, but I keep feeling guilty about it. So once she went through the women's code, she realizes that she, at 60, is in the, the love, love eager, eager rhythm. Yeah. And she said that she felt it was a permission type concept and i think it's a, a lot of about the women's code is just giving women permission to be where they are without judgment right so she said and once i lost the guilt that i should be doing something else i am enjoying my life so much more i had this other woman in seattle that i was working with and she was 31 and she just had had her first child a brilliant marketing mind you know great job but she was all of a sudden in this in this in this in this tug of war between loving being a mother but feeling that you know this was the time for her to take care of her career she goes through the women's code and now she says it was like you gave me the the way to unknot my inside excellent she says, now I know that I am simply enjoying the ego rhythm of family, of motherhood. Right. And that I am giving myself permission to do that because, you know, there will be a time when career maybe will be more important again or something else will come up. So that's what I, what I teach women is how to, you know, with, with a little bit of thought, a little bit of effort, with a little bit of consciousness to glide from these, you know, rhythms into the next rhythm so that it's no longer this constant battle inside right. our heads of what I should have done today and what I didn't do because we never acknowledge what we actually do. We always see only what we haven't done yet.
you know, uh, you bring up a good point there is that as you're go- as you're as you're going through a specific rhythm, it's really good to instead of just having myopic, you know, a, a view of this one tree in front of you, to look at the forest out in in, a, in your time horizon and design whatever wave you're in so that it begins to be um, self-sustaining or self-replicating past its own uh, demise. For example, a business. I mean, there's lots of ways you can make money. You can freaking go to a job. Good Lord help you. Um, uh, I'm genetically unemployable, by the way. Uh, Yeah, I think me too. (laughs) And so, you know, you could go to a job and that, you know, you may love whatever you're doing right now. And there's going to come a day, I don't care what you do, that you ain't going to love that thing no more. So, I mean, we are in the Internet age, so, you know, you can roll up whatever knowledge or mastery you have about a particular topic. You can roll it up into, um, you know, an information to course to sell on ClickBank or you can um, sell it as Kindle books. I mean, you can publish Kindle books coming and going now. So it's really good that you, when you're in the midst of a wave, figure out how to to make that well that wave self-sustaining so you're not bound to it i think that's a big problem is most people stay that you know they they do what they're doing instead of well in business the way i say it is that people work in their business instead of on their business like about 90 percent of my time is working on my business 10 percent in so that you know everything i do the majority of what i do is focused on you know how can i make this puppy self-sustained so that when i go into another wave like you're talking about I can go into that, and I got the financial and time resources that free me to do that. Exactly, that's exactly. And see, and that's and and what 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 I just saw what happened with you. See, it's all about the minute the awareness is raised, the knowledge immediately starts to fall into place. So you already know now. You've already put it to use. You've already you've already oh yeah. You've already taken this and said. Oh, I already see how this works works in my life, and now uh, I've already intuitively have done you know some of it, or I'm doing it. But now you understand that yep. um, that there really is um, is a conscious effort. And the difference what I found between men and women really is that the comp- compartmentalization, the prioritization, which you talked about, is very male centric. And it's it's you know it's this is what is in your DNA because when yeah, a man was good, hunting, yeah. you certainly weren't thinking about your relationship at home. No, I, I think that's a big difference between male. Uh, I think probably even the brain physiology. We're geared towards single pointed, uh, single pointed focus, where women are more geared toward multi um, multi threading and more spatial focus. Community, yes. Yeah. Our 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 focus is more community, whereas your focus is is definitely more more single focused. So what happens? So now we you know so now we we raise the awareness. Women have the understanding, and the men have the understanding because now see if you look at your wife, David. Mm-hmm. Now and you, you already, know I do too. I know you do, and now you look at her and you go, hmm, which 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 algorithm could she be in and now you recognize that you that she you know she has just as much as you do her right to be in her rhythms yeah and so what i explain to men and the best example is anyone who's ever had a child knows that the first 3 years of this child's life are a not much attention for the man land you know, there is very, for many, very little sex. Yeah, it's keeping very, the baby alive. Yeah, very little attention to the man. The man, you know, everything changed for the man. The woman has these hormones going bonkers. You know, she's thrown into this job. She has no clue how to do because they wrap that baby up. They give it to you and say, you can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then what? So it takes a woman really one full ego rhythm, which is about three years, uh, to go through that whole thing of figuring out how that works. Many relationships fall apart because in that, in that, in that ego rhythm, in that motherhood ego rhythm, men have no communication with their wives because they don't know how to communicate what's going on. Men don't understand what's going on so the man is just like waiting and you know and doing their thing and the women go off and do whatever their other thing and all of a sudden we have them in different cycles but if i can explain to a man as a woman look 
this is what most likely will be happening. You know, we're having our first child, my body's changing, my emotions are changing, I love you. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, I'm asking you to please bear with me for the next three years for this one ego rhythm of motherhood and just support me in this motherhood. Can you as a man do that if I present it to you like that? You know, that's that's a really uh, interesting way of presenting because when men have a timeline like we know in our heads that it's going to start here and end here, then we can plan and focus on that end date and we're, you know, we're in it for the long haul with you. Because then what you do is you go, oh, oh, I don't need to be home now with the new baby for the next three years if I'm hearing this right. You, you're telling me that you're going to do sort of most of this stuff. So, well, if that's the case and I'm not getting much attention at home because you're so busy, then how about if I use the time? Right, exactly, for my next rhythm, whatever that is. You know, and I'll do that because because that's really what happens because men can't do much with the babies because the babies hang on moms yeah and it isn't really until the kids are about three, three years old right when that focus gets away a little bit from mom and mm. the horizon opens well guess what now we've communicated now this rhythm has 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 done what the rhythm naturally is supposed to do and you've done your thing we are not frustrated we you know we've 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 communicated the differences of this rhythm and now i can rely on you more because now after these 3 years of complete focus on the child i'm probably pretty ready for something else cool that's really interesting <laughs> i like it Oh, good. good. I'll, I'll have to get you my to listen to this. And by the way, Michelle Miller, when you're listening to this interview, come on, girl, get this up. Uh, you know, the women's code for men and women. That's what it should be. Yes. And I think that's really the secret is that it's, um, you know, it's about raising the awareness and then it's about allowing this communication to flow and to you know and to take again the blame out it's not that the man did some it's not that the women does something but because we don't know why we are so unhappy or overwhelmed right. we say well david but but you never wash and you didn't you don't ever do groceries and and then you say yeah but you need to give me a list in order to do groceries i don't know what you want and right. then i say well see but shouldn't you know me by now so so well and we get in, into the you know into the talking heads scenario and once this starts then the baseline starts to get get thinner and thinner and thinner and that's i think why a lot of these relationships just crash because women you know and what do they say um that that um women want to marry a man and then they end up sleeping next to their girlfriend because they constantly you know keep 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 working on changing them i think it is about it's about understanding i like an alpha you know, I, I am in a relationship and have been for many years with someone who is a classic alpha male. I love that. And once I understood that as an alpha, there are certain things he just cannot do. Right. That I need to adjust my, you know, thinking and my expectation. So I give the example again. Since I've been with Brian, I have not exchanged one light bulb in my house. <laughs> cool. Why? Not because I don't know how to do it, but because it is a tangible item that he can do and contribute so that when we get in the danger of doing the you this, you that, then he can say, remember that, uh, that light bulb over the garage where I had to risk my life on the ladder uh, dangling on one foot. It was broken and ripped out of its, its casing. I mean, the wires were everywhere. Remember what I did for you? And then I can say, oh, baby, you know, you're right. Thank you. You basically saved my life. You know, and <laughs> once the humor and the fun and the playfulness right. comes back in and we understand what the other is better at, life becomes much easier. Now, you know, let- there's a, um, a are you familiar with uh, a um, uh, an author speaker named David Data? Mm-mm. He, he has a really interesting um, sort of translation of what you're talking about here is that um, 
on the scale of uh, masculine and feminine potential, if you think about magnets, if you take a north and south pole and put them together, they stick, they attract. If you take two norths or two souths, they push on each other and repel. So he said, you know, if you'd like to have a great relationship, you know, you, if you're a man, you cultivate your masculine uh, characteristics and you as a woman cultivate your feminine. Thanks. The farther the woman goes feminine, the farther the, go, the man goes masculine, the more attraction. And, you know, if you're like you say, you know, you try to uh, turn your guy into your girlfriend, then all you got is re repulsion, right? Yes, exactly. Interesting. Now, I want to take that to business because, you know, the course at the Wizard Academy is about leadership and uh, leadership for women. So with that knowledge, this universal principle of this is who I am, this is where I am, you are different. This is the universal principle of the women's cult that we use for the leadership. Because if I understand that there are people that are different, not that we don't know that people are different, we know people are different, but we don't know. No, we don't feel it in our cell so much. Because yeah. they don't have a right to be different. Because if I am an alpha in business, then I feel most comfortable amongst other alphas. Because then it's like, that was a great idea. Well, well guess what about that idea? No, that idea. You know, we're in this wow, you know, wow thing. But I learned as an alpha woman with uh, high t feministic tendencies, you know, and, and I, I love being a woman and I, I want women to be women and I want women to be sexy and feminine and, and, you know, sometimes helpless. But when it comes to business, the principle also is if I'm an alpha, should I have a team of only alphas? Mm -hmm. Would that behoove me to only associate with the alphas it can't no because yeah. we have what you just talked about the same uh the polarity where we where we then repel and then it's again you know the gossip the bullying because then we're trying to outdo each other every alpha woman needs what i call a maximizer it's the b type you know that's the person that can take the idea right put it on paper and you know and and expand on the idea and if I, you know, an accountant should never be an alpha. No. Ever. Because imagine what would happen to the numbers if he'd had constantly or she had constantly great ideas that just doesn't work. No, the whole purpose of accounting is that it's got to be repetitive and boring for it to work. But they love that yeah. because because it's it's the personality of someone mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, and, and for those who, who know about Myers-Briggs, about these personality tests, that, by the way, really fits nicely in the, you know, in, in this whole concept is because really everyone has their place. So let's go yeah. back to the men, you know, so that the strongest one's going to tackle. The smartest, you know, the one with the best aim is going to shoot. Throw, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, again, intuitively in the team, everyone has a job. Has their skill, right? Has the best skill in the skinning, uh, will do the skinning. The one that is the fastest will be, you know, the first one who's going to run after uh, mm -hmm. the thing. And the one that's the loudest will, you know, whatever, do the chasing. I mean, whatever that may be. And we have to look at leadership from the same perspective. Who would I have to have on my team? Right. And where is their natural fit, where they can excel and be in their rhythm, where they can go at 100% and mm -hmm. it's the greatest contribution to, you know, to my, uh, to me being a leader. Who can support me in that leadership and who can I support back? Interesting. So what's the, what's the, um, uh, the, uh, the best type of person to attend your uh, workshop? What's, the, what's their characteristics? Um, the people that come to my workshops are, um, I, I call, you know, from the women's side, it's, I call them the women in the trenches yeah. and, and in the know. And it's a non-judgmental way uh, to put it. I, I work a lot with women that really are at that place where they, you know, have the family and the kids and they are in the trenches. They try to make it all work. Right. They don't have much time. They are perfect for this because... I can help you, you know, to, with the concept, life will become an, in an instant easy. It's not going to be less work, but it's going to be mentally easier to manage and it's cool. going to be easier for you to communicate. The second type of woman that is perfect for this are women that are over 40 
um, that are now in the, you know, that, that where the kids are already a little bit older, mm-hmm. where they hear that voice inside that says, what about me? I have a lot of women that I work with that have done, you know, dedicated their lives to, you know, families and they are now ready to really make a splash. So that's my my, my second uh, big, big group of women that uh, um, loves the women's code. From a, from a male perspective, I have yet to found a man who doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle Miller, I hope you're listening. That's funny. <laughs> And we have fun. I mean, it, it's, it really is. I, I have some great examples. And, uh, you know, in, in, you know, sometimes it gets emotional because, you know, we do have to establish a ba- baseline and, and, and there are barriers that are being torn, uh, torn down. But we also we also like to have fun. And it's a, it's 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 um, it's it's life changing. It really is. It always is. Cool. Well, we've been going for a while. I mean, you've given some great information. And so um, I ho- hopefully people will have an opportunity to attend. So um, let's see, when um, when are you arriving in town? So uh, for those who are who are, are paying attention, we're going to make up another event here. So wh- when are you arriving in town? Um, I'm arriving whenever you need me to be there. Well, let's see, you're going to be here the 24th and 25th is on um, Wednesday and Thursday. So we ought to do like a Tuesday, like, uh, you know, meet you, meet and greet uh, to talk a little bit more about what we talked about here. Yeah, I'm 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 all game. I think where where, are you staying out at the uh, Wizard Academy? Yeah, well, I may. Um, I am. Uh, uh, st- I'm definitely going on the d- uh, the night before up there because I want to make sure that everything is in order and prepared properly. But uh, on that Tuesday, I could come in on the Monday and stay. Uh, oh, okay. and stay overnight. Yeah. Well, what we could do is like a, a noon, like a noon Tuesday thing. Yeah, sounds uh, great. So um, you've got uh, plenty of time to prep for your um, uh, the next day. So I'll just make something up here, random. Uh, uh, noon on Tuesday the 22nd to um, I'll just say uh, uh, figure it out <laughs> and I'll I'll, uh, I'll come up with a venue and some place for you to speak at uh, noon on Tuesday the 23rd then yeah sounds great I'm game I'd love it and I awesome. you know I've had so much fun in Austin and I keep coming back for more so it's a uh, it's really interesting to me because you know you, you never know what a place is like until you actually spend some time there. And Austin's really it's a really interesting uh, juxtaposition of uh, you know we've got the state government capital here and all sorts of spiritual different um, uh, technologies have their uh, epicenters here and it's you know the technology and business internet marketing SEO expertise I mean it's it's a really uh, interesting um, collection of uh, different uh, alternative technologies or, or technologies that are sort of pushing the envelope, as it were, in their evolution. Yeah, no, I I I found that in um you know in the couple times I was at the Wizard Academy, because the first time you go out to the Wizard Academy, you go like, What the heck is this place? <laughs> And then and then all of a sudden, you know, things are starting to happen and to connect and you go like, oh, there's another way to think about this. Oh, there's another way to think about this. Oh, there's another way to think about it. And you have these different people from, you know, that have passed over the world and, 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 and Nobel Prize winners and sign scientists and, you know, and and uh, uh, radio people. And all of a sudden you go like, what is it about this that attracts such a vast uh, area of, of people? And then yeah. you're hooked and then you're hooked. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who are kind of uh, this is your first introduction to the Wizard Academy, what I'd recommend is the. Uh, so um, you're doing your workshop on the 24th and 25th of October. There's a, um, a free Friday, a first Friday. The next one is uh, uh, October the 5th, and I'm sure it will uh, completely book out. So I'd recommend you go sign up for it now. And if you go to that, I mean, that's like a college. Have you ever been to one of the first Fridays? Yeah, actually, that's how I introduced the women's code. In it was in January. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, cool. I I missed you there. Um, that that must have been one of the few I miss. I usually go to all of them. Um, and so um, go to the first Friday, and you'll um, become a uh, honorary alumni because it's like a 
a college course in the space of an hour. Better come with a pen and paper and be prepared to take it by fire hose. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty intense. It and is very intense. Yes. So come on, come on uh, uh, October the fifth, and uh, you'll be an alumni, and then you can go and uh, sign up uh, for the uh, women's code um, and get half off. Yeah, that would be awesome. And and you know, again, it this is this is this is going to be fun. We we have fun. We'll laugh. Cool. Well, All awesome. Right. Well, uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, visit with folks and let them know about your gig. Thank you, David. I really appreciate uh, all the time and energy. And let's uh, fill out this this puppy. Excellent. Okay. Take thank care. you. Bye bye. Bye bye.